Hello, today we'll be looking at what's in this box from HTRC, but just before we get into that, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can find that little bell icon, click on it and it might tell you when I'm uploading stuff. So, what have we got today? We have got from HTRC the T400 Pro Duo charger. I've looked at a couple of um, chargers, well actually quite a lot of chargers just recently, they keep coming thick and fast. And I did recently look at this Toolkit RC dual charger which is quite low priced but the only problem with it that I found is you have to have a big power supply to plug into it because um, it works off an XT60. This one has a regular power supply that you plug into the mains and I generally think that most people would charge at home and then go out and do stuff. Unless they're the guys that go into the race event, that's when you'd want um, a charger that can run off XD60 and you can charge batteries that way. This will actually run off both, but primarily I guess you're looking at a, a sort of mains based charger for being at home. Anyway, let's get it out of the box. I'll show you exactly what you get in there. I have to say some of the stuff I looked in here before, it looks kind of a bit of a throwback to early chargers, but the rest of it's very up to date. So you get a manual, then you get this big lump of a charger in here and what I was talking about the sort of throwbacks is you've got these banana style plugs to uh, plug in and that's your adapter coming out that you plug into. The uh, balance ports as well have a little balance board that comes out. Um, we've got twin fans for heat dissipation. Uh, you've got your AC input here. Uh, this is a pretty standard plug but I think Banggood sell it with like a Euro, a US and a UK plug. I'll get the UK one. And an actual switch which is quite unusual. Normally I have to unplug them. Um, you'll notice a lack of buttons here, it's touch screen, so we'll check that out. Also in the box, the power adapter, as said, I got the UK version, but um, EU and uh, US available. You've got two of the balance boards, that just saves you having to plug directly into the balance port. Often I'm using extension cable on, on chargers that don't have those, it's a, a little bit easier, but you know. Also, of course, is ready. And then you've got two of these. Now this is where it's a real throwback. Remember these? Dean's connectors? I haven't seen those for a while. Um, anybody still using Deans? I, I really haven't seen them around. And as if to slightly say, okay, we admit Deans aren't the things. Here's some Deans to XT60 converters so you can at least plug in that way. And then you've got another bit of a throwback. You've got crocodile clips into an XT60 there. And that is for your DC power in the side here. Instead of the power thing, you plug in there and then you can plug something in. Or obviously a battery in there. Although the power is only 11 to 18 volts. So this is lower than normal. It's only up to like a 4S battery if you're plugging in that way. That's everything you get in a box, but let's see it in close up now, because I've yet to turn this on. I'm looking forward to see what, what happens and how the screen is, and uh, we'll try charging up some batteries and things. Right, okay then, we got the charger out, so let's turn it on and see what happens. I'm just gonna zoom in a bit so you can see the screen. The screen's pretty good to say I've got some pretty bright lights on. Uh, you can actually read it quite well. And what we got, it's it's pretty, pretty obvious on the touch screen. I haven't really read the instructions, which is probably quite as well, because they're not that good. But you've got literally channel one and you can press and go across to channel two. And then you've got LiPo, Life, Lilo, LiPo HV, Smart Battery, PB, Nikehead, all the different types of batteries before you start getting into anything else. But let's just, uh, for example, check out our settings. And we've got the buzzer volume, the low input voltage, balance speed, AC power. Uh, and then we've got specific settings for channel one and channel two. All pretty, uh, pretty obvious stuff. Uh, then we've got memory section, which looks pretty good. It looks like you can um, we modify that. We can basically say we want a balanced charge at a certain current. Uh, battery seal could be auto and voltage, depending on what we've got. It's so you can uh, basically quick charge any batteries you do often. Like, for example, I've got a whole bunch of 1.3 uh, milliamp hour 4S batteries. Uh, you've also got monitor where you can basically check your um, internal resistance, pretty cool. And then you've got the actual charge bit. Now it just so happens I need to go flying tomorrow. Uh, normally I'd be out on bigger quads and be doing these ones, these XT60s, but I've got a couple of smaller quads which can take XT30s. Now what I've done, I've connected in as you would normally have. So I've got the balance ports there, I've got the basically the Deans into the XT60 and that's what it would come with. So you'd either have like an XT60, XT30 converter or because I've used these type of chargers before, I've got some replacement banana plugs uh, straight to XT30, which look like this. And you'll find these are pretty easy to get hold of actually, because uh, these are the way charging's always been done. Now, I feel kind of a bit of a cheat not using the original cables, but that's 
you know, much of a muchness. Often it's the case that I have to swap cables out or use adapters depending on what sort of batteries I'm charging. Today, I just happen to be needing things with XT30 connectors, so there you go. But we can at least do two different sorts. There's a, an 850 milliamp power here and a little 260 high voltage for us. So let's plug these in and see what you do. I'm just gonna plug these in here first. So obviously this is not exactly mysterious. It's just a case of plugging those bits in like that. Okay, so we've got the 260HV on the right and the 850 regular on the left. I'm just telling you that so when I zoom in, we won't have to sort of think about it. So channel one is a regular LiPo and it is 4S, it's detected. Our charge current is gonna be uh, 850. On this, it's gonna be like 0.8. End voltage is 4.2. Yeah, that looks good. Start that. And that's off and running. On channel two, we are using a LiPo HV 4S. Our charge current on that one it's going to be 0.2 of an amp, not much. And our end result is 4.35 per cell, which is right. Uh, and that's underway. So we've got internal temperature, input voltage, voltage, current, and capacity. What was it? Press cell. Shows us the cells and how full they are. This, this is literally brand new out of pack, this one. So it looks like they were already charged a little bit higher than I would like. If I look at channel one, they're at 3.8 because I put them at storage. A slightly obvious thing to do. Honestly, I'm not sure what this picture is supposed to tell me. I've just had a look at the manual. It shows there's a picture. It doesn't really suggest what the picture is being. I don't know if it's temperature. Kind of looks like it might be because it's trying to keep there, but there's no scale anywhere, which isn't particularly useful. So I kind of think, uh, this might be the, the better option. But I suppose the important thing is the amount of current it's putting in, how many milliamp hours it's put in uh, over here, similar the same, the overall voltage. Is it drawing the voltage? I'm not sure. If it was color coded somewhere, it would be useful. I just can't tell. It's like, is that empty and that full? I guess we'll find out at the end, won't we? Cell may be more useful, who knows? Who knows? There, it doesn't seem to be what I would like is like a split so you can see both, but you can't quite see it. Anyway, some stats on this one. So each uh, distinct charger obviously can do different cells and different types of batteries. Maximum of 12 amps uh, per charger and maximum of two amps discharge. So not too high on a discharge, not bad on the normal charge. Again, it doesn't say 12 amps on what cell battery but you can work it out because each uh, side is 200 watts hence the t400 200 watts that side 200 watts that side i can do a quick calculation here and put it on the screen anyway i'm going to basically charge these up i'm going to then compare with my d6 duo pro which i trust a lot and uh, i believe what comes out from that one uh, just to make sure this is showing what it should do and all being well i will take those out for a fly and then i can come back well, firstly, we'll come back and see what happens to that little graft, and then we can come back and see how it works for putting things into storage and that sort of thing. So, join me soon. Well, just filming now because A, it's just ended it and it beeped, and you can see it's saying N. And I'm still not clear if that's voltage. I expect it is, but without any sort of scale, it seems a bit pointless to me. Channel 1's doing much the same thing, sort of going along. It's nearly there, a little bit more. Seems to flatten out a bit. Still tells me that the current's whatever it is yeah i don't know I, I find this graph a little bit confusing i don't really see the point of it but there you go anyway need to charge some more of these so i'll carry on okay so back from my day's flying i've got my batteries connected so the next thing to do is of course put into storage mode so i thought i'd show how to use the memory so this first one it is a lipo and we're going to uh storage charge Battery is 4S, end voltage, it's 3.85 on this one by default. I use 3.85 for high voltage battery as I use 3.8 for normal. Discharge current 08, switch so discharge current 08 and charge current. So if I save that now, we'll pick a thing here and we'll say save. 
and then we can actually say start and that will start storage charging so if we now go to channel 2 what we can do is just go to memory and then it's already on that one so we can say start and that gets that one rolling so an easy way to do things if you've got a, a few batteries that you regularly charge and storage quite a useful feature where are we anyway oh crikey we're very close <laughs> having just flown it uh what's the other one look like pretty close pretty close won't be much work to do here all right well i just found a problem here if you notice it wants the end voltage at 3.9 and i want it at 3.85 so if we start that because what has happened is it's charged up to 3.9 so i would expect it to come back down but what happens is it goes to end and then when we hit stop it's saying it's at 3.9 so i can't seem to override the end voltage which is what i want to do which is a bit annoying so there you go, that was my test. And I didn't tell you what the results were when I compared to the other charger. And in terms of charging up time-wise and voltage-wise, that was very good. And weirdly, when I put the normal battery into storage and I had to override it from 3.85 to 3.8, that worked fine. That came out as 3.8. It was pretty accurate and it was fairly fast. It was just doing the high voltage one. It would default to 3.9 and it would stay there for some reason. I couldn't override it. I did check back on HDRC's website to see if there's any firmware uploads or anything because there is um, in here a PC link port. There's two, there's one there as well. I don't know if this is just like a monitoring software so you can do charging on the screen or something. There is some software for it. It's Windows only, I didn't get it, but there's no firmware to correct that, which is a bit of a shame because there's features in this which I really liked, but I kind of feel it let me down. But let's talk about the positives. I like the fact there was an on off switch. It's handy to leave your charger plugged in. With all my other chargers, I have to unplug them because generally speaking, they don't have an on off switch. You just plug them in and they start wearing up and then they make a noise. I really liked the interface. It was completely different for anything else, but it was very simple. It's very obvious about which channel you're on, very easy about which battery you were charging. And there wasn't a plethora of options, so it was pretty easy to do. I also liked the fact it had a memory uh, when you're charging lots of the same type of battery to go out, it's very easy just to hit hit the button and go. Although you will notice that many chargers, once you've charged one battery, will default to doing that one, so you can just do them in a row. But quite nice to have a general memory anyway. And it was fairly quick and accurate, certainly compared to my other chargers, which I sort of compare against. They're all very slightly out, but they're all in that same bar ballpark, so nothing's, nothing's way out or anything. Here's what I didn't like. I didn't like that graph screen because what, what's it telling me? I think it's trying to tell me voltage, but it's not giving me any indication of what the voltages are, what it's trying to get to, or, or anything like that. It's not giving me any information about separate cells. It's just it's just really a random line. I really didn't see the point of that. I mean, it's not it's not hurting me, but it, it seems like a waste. I want better information on the screen. Obviously, I didn't like the fact that I couldn't override my storage charge on high voltage batteries. That was a pain. But aside from that, it was pretty good. But I'm, I'm kind of a bit stuck because I can't really recommend something that I was like, well, oh, I didn't like this, I didn't like this. But I did like all these. It's, it's a bit of a, a stickler there, but there are so many charges on the market now and a lot of them work a lot better than this. But I did like the fact this is mains and you plug straight in, you didn't need a power adapter. I really do like uh, charges like that because when I'm charging at home, I don't want to have a big power supply and a charger as well. So, you know. Anyway, there is this one. There's also a cheaper version called the uh, T240, I think, which charges at slightly uh, less, but if you're just charging 4Ss and not huge ones, that probably do as well. You know, if that kind of fits in your category, it's an okay charger, but it could be a lot better. But what I'll do, um, because I've said there's no firmware updates or anything, I can at least drop a line to HTRC and tell them this is what I found this is what I think is good, just in case they want to do anything. And if they respond, I can always do an update and say, this is what they've done. Uh, I, I'm not necessarily expecting them to come back with anything, but you know, you don't get anything if you don't at least drop them an email and say what, what, what I found is a bug and what I think it should do. So I'll do that. In the meantime, this was very kindly supplied for review by Banggood, so many thanks to them. And of course you can find links to this down below. And if you want to check out um, my other charger reviews, there is a playlist just stuck up here if you want to compare it against other ones and see what you think. Anyway, that's all from me today. I hope this review has been useful and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, 
then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.